My name is Max, and in the next 10 minutes, I will introduce you with a new powerful tool for writing rock-solid shell scripts. But to understand why we need it, let's start with the traditional way, Bash. So I see most of you are familiar with Bash. Let's see why I think it's wrong. So to do stuff like list files, it's very simple. All you need to do is ls. To list file recursively, it's also pretty straightforward, just with the find command. But what about list all Scala files recursively? If you know how to do it, it's not a big problem. You need to use find with a minus name argument and provide it with a regular expression to match on the name. Now, let's make it a bit more complicated. What about the listing the three largest Scala files recursively? This is a bit more of a challenge. In the show of hands, who know how to write this command without Googling? I see one person here. <laughs> Two. One that know and one that can try. So that's one of the problems with Bash, that you find yourself Google the same command over and over again, even if you just used it last week. If, if, even if it's something simple, like a for loop or an if statement. And after you Google for it, you find many results. So how do you pick one? Usually, you take the one with most votes on Stack Overflow, right? So you get something like this. So you look at it, but you can't really understand it, right? So you say, okay, I'll look at it again. But you still don't understand it. And say, okay, I will run it. And it seems to work. So you're happy, right? But that's the problem. It seems to work. This is the level of confidence we have in many of our best scripts. And in addition to this low level of confidence, the result here is a string that now we need to parse and extract the data. Let's talk about something else, error handling, or the lack of it. In this example, we have a function that should return some path. And then a variable that is the, it's the concatenation of the result of the function and slash star. And the next command in the script will be rm minus rf remove path. What do you think will happen now? So it depends. In case of success, we will remove the, everything under the path that the function returned. But in case of failure, it will fail silently, and we will remove our root directory, which of course wasn't the intention of this script. So to sum up, best scripts are hard to understand, hard to maintain, and very fragile. We want something better than that. Now, it's a Scala conference here, and we all Scala developers, we like Scala, so why don't we use Scala? Let's try it. So, simple task like list files, which is very simple in Bash, unfolds to more than five lines of code. And we all see where this goes to. So I'm not gonna show you the recursive examples here. So let's say something else. Write text to a file. Again, with Bash, it's very simple. But in Scala, this task is much more verbose, I would say. So definitely, Scala isn't what we are looking for. So what you really want is the power of Scala with the semantics of a shell. For this, welcome Ammonite. Ammonite is a combination of a better Scala REPL and the shell-like operations library. So you can use it as a system shell, or for scripting. Let's try it and see some examples with it. To list files, what you need to do is lsbank wd. wd here stands for the working directory. And the bank is just ammonized DSL, so we don't need to write all these parentheses. Now, the really cool part here, the result is a Scala class. Yes, it's structured data that we can use later on. We'll see the example of it. So to this file recursively, it's just ls.rec. Very similar. And another nice feature here of Ammonite is the pretty printing. As you can see, we see only the first few results, and we can see the three dots here that indicates that we have more. Of course, we can see the full result set if you want to. Let's continue. 
What about list all Scala files? We already know how to list all files. This uh, pipe uh, question mark is an alias to filter. We could also we can write Scala here, so we could also write filter, and then we can filter all those files that the extension is Scala. A nice feature here that when you write this underscore dot and press tab, we have auto completion, so we can see all the fields of the. In this case, it's a path. It's a sequence of path. So as you can think, the more complex problem from before becomes very easy now. We already know how to list all Scala files. So all we need to do now is sort these results set by the size and take the last three results. Now, this command, I believe that everyone in this room can understand just by reading it after this short session. Let's uh, see other examples. To change directory, it's cd bang the path. Here again, we have, when we start typing the path, we have auto completion. So you can use it very easily. Write text to a file. Very similar to the bash. You can uh, use the same style of piping the content to the next command. You can run any, ext any process just by writing percent, the name of the process, and then the list of the arguments. In this example, I'm, writing, I'm uh, executing git status. So it's easy breezy. So far, we saw how we can use Ammonite almost with the same ease of, of bash, but we also get the benefits of Scala. In addition, it is safe. Let's talk about type safety. In this example, we have two values. One is an absolute path, and the second is a relative path. Let's play with them now. We, if we try to combine an absolute path and then a relative path, this is fine. We get an absolute path. We can also combine two relative paths. This is also fine. We get a relative path as a result. But what about combining a relative path and then an absolute path? We all know this, this doesn't make any sense. So with Ammonote, we will get a compilation error, as we expect to. Another example is error handling. In case of a runtime error, an exception will be thrown here. And unless we handle it, the execution of the script will be stopped, exactly as you expect it to be. So in this example, I'm trying to change the directory to a non-existing one. And an exception is thrown. In addition to all these goodies, you can load any JVM library into your shell without SBT or any kind of tools. Just from your shell or script, just do load.iv, and then the SBT-like identifier for the library. And now you can start using it right away. So in this example, I'm loading JSOUP. Here, I'm fetching the wix.com website, and the result, as you can see, is a document. So it's not a string. I can work with it. And now I can select the, head, the header, and as you all can see, it all starts with a stunning website. Create yours. It's easy and free. To wrap up, Ammonite blurs the line between a system shell to a programming language. It provides you with the semantics of a shell, combined with the power and safety of Scala, and on top of it, you can use all the JVM ecosystem at your fingertips. Now, this was a very small taste of Ammonite. I encourage you all to go to the website, get read a little bit more about it, and try it yourself. Thank you.